What's up, guys? Welcome to another edition of Market Marauders, beating the market one trade at a time. If you're the Market Marauders, an investment channel, helps you find the best deals in the market. That's something you're interested in. Make sure you smash the subscribe button down below, like, comment, and share. Now, it's been a crazy week in the market. We got Apple making crazy plays with their 4 to 1 split. We got Amazon making crazy plays with historic earnings. Hope everybody was able to lock in those option plays with those. Um, in my community tab, I had some of those option plays, was able to capitalize on those AMD calls. AMD went up like crazy, was able to capitalize on those. Hopefully everybody was able to get in on that so they can profit, grow your account. Uh, as you are aware, it is earnings season. So last week was earnings, this week's earnings, and next week's going to be even more earnings. So, you know, a lot of moves being made in the options market. So let's jump into the picks for this week. Hope everybody was able to lock in those profits and let's jump into it. All right, jumping into watch list for options. All right, so on our watch list for options, first one we got ticker sign CHGG for Chegg. Um, moving average 10 is $80.19. Moving average 50 is $78.76. Moving average 100 is $76.30. And, and it ended the week at $80.97. So above all three metrics. Um, yep, above all three metrics. Uh, it's going to be on a little bit of a breakout here. Um, denoted by the WVAP, I mean the VWAP 14 line and the moving average 10 line. So, you know. Seems to be on a little bit of a breakout. Um, they do um, seem to have began their breakout probably um, around the 29th, it seems. Uh, they started this little bullish run, and it's continued to go up. Uh, it's the 15-minute chart, and this review is going to be from the perspective of Webull and Robinhood. If you'd like to sign up and get two free stocks, make sure you check the description down below uh, and sign up. Um, which stock platform is better, Robinhood or Webull, um, you know, that's up to you. I'm not here to tell you which one to use. Uh, I use both, so, you know, that's how I get down. So, check it out in the description. So, on here, I don't like to just go over charts, because I don't think charts is really tells you what you need to know, or I have not mastered the art of just reading charts. So I like to get some background information so I can make a good concrete decision on whether I want to trade options on this stock or not. So let's go into some background information on Chegg and let's see what they have going on. So this is their last quarter earnings, uh, this first quarter of 2020 uh, financial results. So let's go back in time a little bit and see how they performed last earnings because they have their earnings coming up next week. So, if you look at their total revenue uh, from the last earnings, it was $131.6 million, an increase of 35% year over year. So, you know, a lot of people out there using Chegg, if you don't know what Chegg is, uh, basically is the way that most people pass all their classes. <laughs> um, it is a tutoring tool where you can rent your books. Um, it also gives... Um, you know, some answer keys to a lot of different books. Uh, so, you know, if you're out there studying and, you know, you're trying to figure out a problem, you don't know how to solve it, uh, it can help you to figure out that answer. So, um, you know, I use it a lot in school. Um, you know, I rented a couple of books from them. So, very good resource. Uh, sometimes the books that I rented from them were a lot cheaper than the bookstore. Uh, if you're familiar with college bookstores, they're very expensive uh, and, you know, a lot of those books are very expensive, and, you know, the local bookstores um, are pretty expensive as well. So, you know, Chegg seems to be, you know, a pretty good place where you can rent books for a pretty decent amount. Um, so jumping into uh, their service revenue, service revenue grew 33% year over year uh, to $100.4 million, uh, million, so, or 76% of total Net revenue compared to 77% in quarter one of 2019. Net loss was 5.7 million. Net GAAP net income was 29.0 million. Adjusted EBITDA was 31.8 million. 2.9 million uh, number of 
Chegg Services subscribers, uh, an increase of 35% year over year. Uh, so their total revenue increased by 35% and their number of users increased by 35%. Uh, 235 million total Chegg study content views. So it's basically people who got on there and looked at their uh, total content. So this is stuff that happened in May. So if we think about May, the market in May was completely different than the market that is currently now uh, going on. A lot of stuff has happened. Um, during May, it was like, you know, right after the big crash that happened in April and, you know, starting to begin, you know, the trend of the market going back up as a whole for looking at the total market for SP 500. Um, but, you know, now, you know, one reason why I'm picking them for my watch list is we've got to think people know now if they're going back to school, uh, and Chegg is definitely going to be, you know, one of the sources for that, um, helping people come back and catch up on, you know, the learning that they didn't have uh, while the whole pandemic situation happened. Because I don't believe people are just sitting at home studying, uh, you know, waiting to go back to school like, yeah, I'm going to study every day so I could be ahead of my classmates. You know, I don't I don't think that's happened. I don't, I don't know anybody who's like that. Uh, <laughs> people are probably out partying or, you know probably working or doing other things, you know, to preoccupy their time or, you know, had other issues going on other than classes. Um, so, you know, just was an extended break, you know, some family vacations and stuff like that. But now, now that people know, you know, school or wherever school they go to is going to start back up or, you know, they have online classes or whatever. Now, you know, people know that information. They'll be willing to, you know, get back to their uh, check accounts or, uh, you know, find somebody that has one um, or, you know, try to rent their books and stuff like that. So going into uh, the other press release from them, uh, basically just states that they have their earnings coming up on Monday, August 3rd. Uh, so check in for that. Um, on here, they actually have uh, the call-in number, and you can click on this, and it'll give you into like a portal. They usually ask a couple of questions, like what's your name, what company you work for, email address. Uh, they don't spam you, so you know, you're know not signing up for some subscription service just because you click on this. Uh, just information for them, uh, for their record books, to see who's actually tuning into the webcast. So... You know, if you're a new investor out there, you haven't gone to earnings, this is a good way to get into earnings so that you can go and just see what the company is talking about, uh, you know, see how they perform. Uh, a lot of investor questions come out of that, which they don't produce in the press release. So after this is going to be a press release where they're going to have, you know, all the data of all the stuff that came out, basically the same thing that I just read for this uh, second quarter 2020 financial results, but it's going to be minus the investor question. So the investor questions, you know, they may be like, um, so I may ask a question, how does Chegg expect to meet the demand of the changing, you know, educational ecosystem or some elaborate question that they may ask? And, you know, you have the top people of the company who are able to ask that, answer that question. So, you know, that question is not going to be put into the press release. So that's why I have them uh, as one of my option trades and I think you know that they're gonna go up so I think a call is the best option uh, in my personal opinion and yes I do have one already so you know not just telling you all uh, this stuff just to say it you know I'm actually you know a practitioner I actually do you know have these calls as well or some of them as well so you know I know a lot of uh you know, trading people out there will be like, oh, I'm telling you to go invest in this. Yeah, it's a good thing. Invest in this. Uh, yeah, I would strongly invest in this. And they don't invest in anything. They're just like, oh, you lost money. Oh, well, that sucks for you. You know, I'm actually invested in some of this stuff. So if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But if I'm right, then we're right. So hopefully it all works out. Uh, this is on the Robinhood platform. So I don't, I, okay, disclaimer, I do not sell calls or sell puts, only buy calls or buy puts. So just bear that in mind, it's gonna be from that perspective. Um, I just don't like selling calls and selling puts. Um, you know, that's just personally me. Uh, it's just my way of trading options. Uh, I've had more luck in this way than I've had in other ways. So, you know, nothing against it. Nothing against our condors or debit spreads, credit spreads. Um, nothing against all of those. This is just the way that I trade. And this is video just to point you in the right direction of a suggestion on what you could be looking at to potentially trade. Always do your own due diligence. I'm not a financial advisor. Contact a um, 
professional CPA or a licensed uh, accountant or somebody uh, in the financial field. Uh, if you want to get actual investing advice, uh, this is just for educational purposes. Just bear that in mind. So I think between the $100 to $115 strike price, uh, which is going to be on this left-hand side, is the right strike price. Uh, I definitely see it going up. Uh, it's still, you know, shooting up. Um, you know, it's kind of after hours right now. So it went up a dollar. Uh, last time I looked at it, it was 80. So it went up to like a 81.25 after hours. Uh, so, you know, it's still going up. So I think it definitely has potential to keep moving um, at a steady pace. But definitely after earnings, seeing it jump up because all the stocks uh, have jumped up. You know, Amazon jumped up, uh, Apple jumped up, and they kind of, you know, way down or a large portion of the S&P 500. So, you know, definitely looking for positive news on the rest of the stocks, especially ones like this one. So, on the right-hand side, you're going to be looking to pay between $165 per call all the way to $318 per call on the Robinhood platform. So, let's jump to the Webull platform and compare and see what you'll be paying on that. Uh, going back to that, actually, it's going to be expiration date of September 18th, so it's not too far out, uh, about a month out, so just bear that in mind on that one. Uh, going into the options side of Webull, we can see with the strike price, um, 100 to 115. So the way we will set up uh, this bid on both sides is representative of buy. Uh, so on the left hand side, you have all the calls. On the right hand side, you have all the puts. In the middle, you have all the strike prices. So it's a little bit different uh, than the Robinhood platform. If you're switching between platforms, uh, I'm not saying which one is better. I'm just saying, you know, this is the difference in the platforms and how to interpret, uh, you know, if you're switching between the two. Um, so the bid is to buy, bid is to buy, ask is to sell, ask is to sell. So you got the puts, you got the calls, uh, buying a call, strike price, we're looking for 100 to 115 So 100 you have $285 per contract, and then 115 you have 130 per contract. So, you know, a little bit different range. Uh, also bear in mind, Webull and Robinhood are not one-to-one, -one, so you can't say, you know, I'm going to buy it. You know, i got a certain amount of money. I'm going to buy a call on this platform, buy a call on this platform. It's not a one-to-one because -one they're two different trading platforms. So, you know, it's not going to be the same price for each one. So just bear that in mind uh, when you're buying options, it's not a one-to-one. -one. You know, Robinhood doesn't have the same have the same prices as Webull, and Webull doesn't have to have the same prices as Robinhood. Um, so just bear that in mind the two platforms uh, when buying contracts. And also bear in mind this is based off the market being closed. Also, if we see on here, it says that it's eighty dollars and ninety seven cents, but if you go on to Robinhood, it says it's eighty one dollars twenty five cents. So, you know, also bear that in mind. Both the platforms are different. Both the platforms go in different ways. This is where it stopped at. It may confuse you, but if you look on the right hand side, it says after hours eighty one twenty five. So, you know, eighty ninety seven maybe where they stopped and where they had that cutoff, but if you go look on here. 8125 may be where they stopped and where they had their cutoff. So just bear that in mind uh, when looking into options. Uh, also, if you would like to get into options trading uh, or do it full time, you're going to have to sign up for options on both of these platforms. So as soon as you get the app, you're not going to be automatically given options as an option. You know. <laughs> You're going to have to sign up for options, go into the account settings and sign up for options. Uh, you have to do it on Webull and you have to do it on Robinhood. So either platform you choose, um, you'll have to sign up for options. Links are in the description down below. So going into the second one that I have for the week is sticker sign W uh, for Wayfair. Wayfair has been on a crazy rip, crazy breakout, uh, in my opinion, in the past week, you know, week and a half. If we go here, we see on the 28th, it began its its breakout, uh, continued to go, just run up like crazy. Um, volume kind of slacked off towards the end of the day, uh, which is noted by the VWAP line. Uh, so volume was kind of stagnant towards the end of the day. It was up and down, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. And it just kind of ran sideways towards the end of the day. Don't know if that's a good thing or if people are just waiting for earnings. Um, you know, don't know what, what happened with that whole situation. 
But if we look at it, the moving average 10 lot is above the moving average 50 and the moving average 100. So to me, I did notes that it's still a bullish trend, even though it is running sideways. So what are those numbers? We got the moving average 10 is 264.29. Moving average 50 is 257.34. Moving average 100 is 246.37. And ended the week at 266.09. So above moving average 50 and moving average 100. And above the moving average, 10. So, all good metrics still on this bullish trend upwards. Uh, and let's jump to some background information on them. So, this is their past earnings for Q1. Uh, revenue growth was 20% year over year uh, to $2.3 billion. 21.1 million active users, up 29% year over year. Going to the first quarter 2020 financial highlights. Total revenue increased 38 385.2 million uh, to 2.3 billion, up 19.8 percent year over year. Direct retail net revenue increased 391.4 million to 2.3 billion, uh, up 23 20.3 percent year over year. U.S. net revenue increased 317.3 million, up 19.1 year over year. International revenue increased 67.9 million, up 23.7 year over year. So. A lot of good metrics, uh, a lot of uptrend, um, you know, stuff going on with that. Bear in mind, this also was in May. So, you know, their quarter ended in March 31st, uh, 2020. So kind of right as the market was falling down. Um, so just bear that in mind, this is basically, if you take a timestamp, this is right before the whole market crash. So, you know, before all of the, you know, lockdowns and, quarantines and all that stuff really you know took into effect so you know this is before people were still out working people were still going out um you know the whole pandemic situation was kind of like a you know it's, it's bad you know but we got a cure coming pretty soon this is before you know stuff got pretty serious um so they have earnings coming up just like chegg so their earnings is going to be august 5th so that's going to be next week as well. So the same with Chegg. You can go on the website and you can listen to it directly. Uh, they'll ask you the same questions. They ask all the time. Where do you work? What's your name? Email address. All the other good stuff. And then you just go in and listen to it. Um, and, you know, get some good information, uh, which help you make a more informed decision. So with that being said, I think a call is the best option. Uh, in my personal opinion, between the price of 300 to 340 strike price, and I'll give my explanation. So my explanation for this is basically, you know, the price for quarter one was before the whole pandemic situation happened, before people were locked down. Uh, and if we take, you know, any clues from Amazon uh, and their earnings and how crazy they shot up after earnings, I think Wayfair is going to do the same thing. People were stuck at home. They order furniture. Or a lot of stuff, you know, people were afraid to go out. Um, you know, you got to think people uh, are starting to work from home. What do people buy who are working from home? Buying desks, shelves, you know, file cabinets, you know, all the stuff like that. Beanbag chairs, desk chairs, you know. I think Wafer is going to shoot up through the roof uh, based off all that stuff because it's a whole different work environment. And it's not just a state thing or a local thing it's a global thing so i think you know people in general were learning how to work from home redoing home office spaces getting new desks you know getting new furniture you know things of that nature i think it's all you know to the positive for wayfair uh especially considering that's main of the things that they sell is furniture so you know definitely seeing them go up uh definitely positive for them so on the Robinhood app, you're going to be looking to pay between $970 to $1,790. A little more expensive than the Chegg ones, but, uh, you know, risk management. Uh, make sure you're not blowing up your accounts. Uh, you know, have a budget for how much you're willing to spend. Uh, try not to have all your money invested into options. Something that I am slowly learning. Uh, don't put, you know, spread your net out too far uh, because, you know, it can hurt you because you got... Your account, your account changes so rapidly because you have all these different plays going on. It's hard to manage the plays that you have. So, you know, you have 
all these different plays going on, you can only watch so many stocks at a time uh, to know when the best entry and exit is. So, you know, unless you've got a team of people behind you, I would I would advise to just, you know, slow your roll. <laughs> so, took a sign W. And we got the September 18th date. Like the other one. Go double check that. Yep, September 18th, just like the other one. And we have a strike price of $300 to $340. So, at $300, remember this is the buy. This is the call section as well. You're looking to pay $1,650 all the way to $910. So, you know, that's what you're going to pay on the uh, Wheel platform. Uh, also, bear in mind, this is when the market is closed, so just bear that in mind as well. And we're going to jump into the next one. So, for the last one, on my watch list, i got ticker sign MRNA, uh, Moderna. So, Moderna, you know, medical company, uh, well-versed in the whole pandemic niche. That's what I'm going to call it, the pandemic niche. But let's jump into the background information. Oh, before we do background information, let's jump into the stock itself and see how it's performing. Moving average 10 is 74.33, moving average 50 is 76.29, and moving average 100 is 78.24. So, they ended the week at 74.10, uh, so they're below all three of those metrics, moving average 10, 50, 10, 50, and 100. So, you know, a little bit on a bearish trend, uh, been going down uh, quite a bit lately, uh, but, you know, I do think they still have potential to run up. Um, and I'll give my synopsis on that. If we look at the VWAP 14, um, definitely volume kind of fell off towards the end of the day, kind of lull with sideways and then a huge decrease, um, you know, of people just selling off. So, you know, it happens, but let me go to the background information on them. I was just going to read some of these press releases, uh, that are going on from them. It says Moderna Announces publication of New England Journal of Medicine of non-human primate uh, preclinical viral uh, challenge study of their vaccine. Uh, it says announces phase three CLVE study of their vaccine, and it and that's when it began in July. Uh, they announced expansion of BARDA agreement to support larger phase three of the vaccine. So if we look on here, we can just see that they're just all engaged in finding a vaccine. So that is their main motive of driving. Um, and it seems like they've had some good results from that. Now, if you look at the stock in the past, you can see whenever they have an update, the stock shoots up, uh, just blast up, just continues to go up. Um, and then it'll go back down and then they'll give some more news and it'll go back up and it'll go back down. It's just the nature of medical stocks, you know, just looking at the history of medical stocks in general, especially considering this niche, that's just how they perform. So, you know, don't be alarmed if that happens. If you're like, I bought it and it, it went down, it w immediately went down. You may have caught it when, you know, after the news came out, um, you know, a couple of days after news came out and people are selling off. Or you may get in it, shoot up, and be like, oh, it's going to keep going, it's going to go to the moon, and then it goes down. Uh, you may have caught it right as the news came out, and then it started to run up. So just bear that in mind, that's how they behave, that's how all medical stocks behave. Don't let anybody tell you different, because that's definitely how they behave. Um, so, if you look at the overall chart of Moderna, it's all bullish, in my opinion. So, you know, look at the chart as a whole, long term. It's bullish, and if you look at the company as a whole, long term, you know, they're definitely making a lot more progress than most other companies are. So, also on the company uh, website, one of the links I clicked on is they do have their earnings coming up on Wednesday, just like Wayfair. So, you have Wayfair and you have Moderna on Wednesday, and then on Monday, you got Chegg. So, bear in mind, all three of these are going to be next week uh, as the time, it's that time of the year, earnings time. So, Look forward to that. It'll be the same procedure as last time. They tell you the time on here. Um, and then they also tell you um, when or what number to call in if you want to listen to it. Uh, do you not see a webcast link on here? So they've up oh, here it is. Yep. 
here's the link. So you just click on that. It'll give you the same information, ask you the same questions that all of them do. Uh, so just, you know, bear in mind, you know, try to go in when, um, right around the time that it begins. If you go before, you'll be put in this weird limbo lobby with, you know, elevator music like crazy and, you know, it's not, it's not what you want. It's not what you want. <laughs> so, um. Uh, that being said, I think a call is the best option, in my personal opinion. And I think between $75 to $95 is a realistic value. Um, so if you look on the left-hand side, we have, see $75 to $95. If you look on the right-hand side, you're looking to pay between $550 to $1,130. So a little bit cheaper than the Wayfair option, but a little bit more expensive than the Chegg option. So, you know... Kind of in the middle, mid-range, you know, all of them are kind of really mid-range. You know, some of the Wayfair ones, if you're going really far out of the money, you know, you may be able to find a deal on that one. But I don't like to go too far out of the money uh, when looking at options, if if I can help it. Uh, just because, you know, some of those, you know, are hard to get out. Um, and you got to be looking for it to shoot up, you know, really high up or, you know, if you're going that far out of the money, my suggestion would be to go that farther expiration. But our expiration is September, not like, you know, July 2022. So just bear that in mind, uh, you know, the higher the price you'll go, the longer you're going to want your expiration date to be. And that's just for most options, for just all options in general. It's a good rule to follow. Going to options on here. We're going to type in mRNA with the September expiration date. September 18th. And we said between $75 to $95. So we got $75 right here, $95 right here. Bear in mind the left hand side is the calls, right hand side is the puts. Um, left hand side $75, we got $1,110. And on the left hand side for the 95 call buy of the 95 call we have 520 dollars so hope this video helped you out make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure you hit that thumbs up definitely help the youtube algorithm out uh help promote my videos you know all that good jazz um drop a comment down below um tell me which stocks you guys are looking at for the week um and good luck to you all i'll try to post something on my community tab as well uh just typing up or you know a picture of the earnings and stuff that are coming out of earnings just so everybody can see and my synopsis uh, i put it in my last community uh tab last week so go check that out and see if you know you were profitable on some of those um and i'll see you guys next time peace